back on Shaklam here this week. Um, I'm actually studying her on the swim where I fished last week, where me and Graham doubled up on this double swim. Um, my plan was, so I had four, was it, yeah, four fish last week and lost two, but all, all the action came on a, a left hand rod. Uh, you can only really put one rod in that area and all the action came off that one rod so my plan was to go further down there is a swim in the corner so I can get all three in that area to uh, give myself a better, better chance but I've just been, I've been studying now about 15 minutes on this same swim that I was on last week and the water where Graham was fishing where it, it, it never had a carp off it it, it could only catch bream I've actually seen three fish show up on the shallow, on the sandbar, like on the shallow water. It's, it's literally 18 inch to a foot deep there, but the fish are, the fish are showing there now, so I don't know what they, I don't ever carry on here now, just put my one, put my one rod down there where I was catching last week, stick one over there and then one in open, because if I get the swim to myself, I've got a hell of a lot of water. Four or five acres to myself. Well, I want three, three or four acres. Um, I'm going to have a walk down there now and have a see what crack is. See if it's worth. Um, don't know what to do now. So the fish, the, 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 the fish are showing, but I don't know what they are. They're not actually nutting out, you know what I mean? They're just swirls. So it could be bream. Anyway, I'll have a walk down there and I'll see what happens. Uh, I've been stood round here now about 20 minutes. Not seeing anything. Um, I think I'm going to go on the double swim where I was last week. Just can't get them fish out my head now. What I've seen. And it is a uh, pretty snaggy here as well. I think I'll have a nightmare. I spend more time in the water than trying to get them out the snags if you do get one. Uh, this, the T3, the one what's in the corner, there's a the spot where I had the fish off. You can't get to that anymore because there's a tree uh, leaning right over. So that's a definite, it's a definite no no that. Yeah, I'm going to go on the double swim, I think. I'll learn. Fish there now in front of me. T3. Decisions, decisions. Never mind up. I'm going on the double swim where I was last week. Uh, the fish are still showing out there, but I don't know what they are. I can't see what they are. But um, there's fish showing on the spot where I had them last week. And there's fish showing just to my left hand corner down this, in that snaggy bit. One keeps cruising up and down there. I think it might be the same fish what I saw when I was down there. I think it's just going up and down this merging. So it's looking a lot better than last time anyway. So I had four, four and lost two without seeing any fish. I've probably been here an hour now. I've seen quite a few mulling about, so go and get the gear out of the van now, get out of these work floors, and I shall see you in a bit. Uh, rods are out now. I'll, uh, 
I'll take you through the spots later on. Uh, it's dinner time, I think. I've got my uh, microphone today, so hopefully the audio will be a, bit, a little bit better. I'll see in a bit. So it's worth carrying on wearing it, looking like a knobhead. Um, the fish where I saw doing that right hand side, what made me come into the swim. Since I've pulled a bait out there, I've not seen a fucking thing. So I might move in the morning, I might go around there in the morning. Um, see what happens. See you in a bit. First fish of the weekend. We uh, not weighed it, probably 17, 18, one of the originals. Well, it looks like an original, I think. It might be the one that stuck his head, I don't know. We do, though. Probably been out an hour, an hour and a half. Belting. Put them back in. Well, that didn't take long. It's probably an hour, an hour and a half. Been in the water. Just finished my pot noodle and it's ripped off. In fact, I thought it was uh, just two geese. It's, it's literally two foot deep where it is. And there was two geese sat right over the top of the spot. And then the bobbin lifted up. So I thought the geese had picked me up until the rod bent, bent round double and uh, it happened last week as well like, that I've got a fish directly with geese sat on top of it um, I was going to tell you where that spot was but I'm not I'm not going to tell you all I'll tell you is it's on the island that's as far as it's going um, still rocking still rocking from last week I did put a lot of bait, all the bait what I had left last week. I, I dropped it on that spot before I left. But there's probably nothing there that left with the geese and stuff. But happy with that spot, it's probably rocking. Oosh, see you in a bit. Uh, it's about half seven now. It's been a quiet afternoon. I think I jinxed myself after saying that spot's rocking. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna have a, I'm just gonna put some tea on. I've just redone the rods. Done all three rods now, and uh, I'm not gonna touch them again there till the morning unless something goes off. Uh, just gonna have a bit of tea now. If I don't uh, see your fruit neat, I shall say that in morn. <laughs> Number two. Uh, one o'clock in the morning there. Uh, a little common. £14 or something. The originals again. in the world but do me beauty get back on that spot again now that same spot again the merging mob the island mob
number three. This is off a right hand rod. Um, pull the twelves in showers. It's probably 15, 16 pound. Morning. Uh, been a busy morning. Uh, so you had that one this this bit half was it probably half one somewhere like that. I think he had that common which beasted me up. Um took me into a snag on my left hand side. Keeping steady pressure on it but I could feel it tugging away but it was definitely in the snag. So I put that rod back down on the slightly the clutch off, put it back down on the rest while I was getting my waders on. Um, and halfway through getting my waders on, it come out the snag, stripping line off. Back it would have been a one tonner if the line was on. Um, that time I got my wader on and picked the rod up, it was halfway out in the middle of the lake, carried on carting right, near enough took me into the snag on my right hand side. I said if I, if I lost that fish, I would have swore it was massive. And uh, I anyway, finally landed it, looked in the net, a 14 pound common. Um, and then this morning, probably half an hour after it had come light, the right hand rod went. Um, that's over towards the sandbar where Graham was fishing last week. Um, that was a pretty good fight as well. There's like a post what sticks out and it was trying to get around the back of that post. Um, managed to get it packed, managed, managed to get it away from it. But then it snagged me up in the bush on the right hand side. So we had to put the waders on and go and get it. Uh, you're not supposed to wade in it, you're not supposed to wade in here but the fish cur. Can't leave the fish tethered. Uh, but anyway, I managed to get it back. And then while I was sorting that rod out, uh, to put it back out again, the left hand rod, the one the, the one on the hot spot, that did the drop back. So I picked that one up, nothing there, wound it in, and the the wafter had been wickled down to next to nothing, so I think a terrapin's been on that. I think it had an indication that it was from that drop back. Um so yeah, they're all back out again on the spots now. So we definitely like a pink wafter in here. Uh, core baits, custom wafters I've been using. So all my fish have come on them. The middle rod, that's on my own bait where I've been playing with. Just a, a bottom bait where I've been, uh, but I've only, had, I've only ever had a bream on that so far. So I think I should leave it to the experts. Um, I'll probably give it till dinner with that one and then I'll redo it and stick it on a pink. See you in a bit. Oosh.
Um, it's half 11 now. We're just going to tie a rig for that middle rod. I'm going to change that now to a pink wafter. Pissing down. It's been raining. It said on my weather app um, it's not going to rain till this afternoon, but it's been raining for about the last two hours now, two and a half hours. Very heavy as well. So I don't know if you can hear me. I've got my um, microphone on. Um, so when I'm going to tie that rig off, I'll, I'll, I'll show you it. I'll start off with a SAS 4 cranked hook. So I normally use a 6, but I'm not going to 6s. So I've got 4s, but we're snag fishing, so probably better. Um, bait screw. And I normally use Entrap Soft, but I've not got any left, so I'm using this um, ESP tungsten loaded. Same kind of texture, different colour. It's a black colour, so it's probably even better in here with it being silt. I'll start off, just pull it out, just leave it hanging on while you tie the knot. And you're tying, if I start you making your D, uh, you tie it on like you're tying a spade end hook. But instead of obviously if you're just tying it on spade end hook, you'd have the hook facing that way with a line going up there. Turn the hook round. So you're tying it, the hook on back to front. So you just grab the hook near the eye and the line pull that back so it forms a loop under your finger and then just whip that up the shank and I'll break this on camera four or five times I'll go for five today grab the lot Back through the loop, pull it down tight. Slab that knot in line with the barb. So we've got that. And it's tied on back to front in line with, with the babies. You can chop that tag end off. And we're cutting that off then a bit, so you've got about 12 inch to play with. Ooh, uh. And slip on your um, bait screw. And you're going to form your D then. You're going to form a D then. Black and fearless. Really big D, probably around about the same, same as the uke, but this is a 4 so I'm not going to be as big as a 4, but if it was a 6, it would be near enough and the same as whatever it is, the size you're using, but just grab that, and then you're just tying a knot, lost knot. I've done this outside where you can see. Whipping away from the opening on the eye. Seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I 
and you got that. And then what I do when you look at if you look at the crank, it's offset. I can get it on there. And the points offset from the shank. So what I'll do is I twist the D the opposite way. So it's coming off. If you look at the, if you look at the thing, it's coming off at an angle out back. Opposite way to where that is. And what that does, let me share that. What that does, as your waft is falling through the water, it makes sure that it, that hits it, the, the, it's the floor. But the, the offset is pointing down. So then as it as it sucks it open it goes in the mouth. That's loud on goes that way and it Ooh, Jack. Ooh, Jack. goes down. Let's see, I've been using that rig seven years now. I've got a well, I'll stick it on my finger down to the wrist and that sets me length of my rig. Bigger of it. There you have it. One curb catcher. Corbett's pink wafter. And you have it. See, it's twisted off to the side. Smasher. Who's yet? That's it. And that's just going in the boat. It's going on a helicopter. Put a, a nugget on. I don't bother sticking it around and all that. Just shove the hook in. It's going to go in on the boat. Just put the hook in. And it's only on to stop uh, it picking anything up as it drops out of the boat. And we've got the core, core Evo boilers, seven crush ones, six, seven, and seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven full ones. And that's it. If you put any more than that in, you just get battered off bream, or the geese, or the tufties. At least if you put a little bit of bait in like that, then um, they just come in, clean you out, fire off, and then you just put some more out. Fish for a bite. It's working. Fish number four. Off the hot spot again. 
of a stocker. Out in. Pink wafter again. On that rig I've just tarred. Well, it's not the one I've just tarred, but it's the same rig. Jubbly jubbly. Can't grumble at that. Cracking fight again. Get her back. Oh, dear now. Do all for the shit. So uh, fish number four, so I'm on the same tally as last week now, um, I lost two last week as well so I'm a little bit behind but it was about 16-17 pounds, one of the stock is, uh, I put the rod back out again and the geese were straying on it, it's still there now, um, I actually hooked one, you could see it come up shaking its head, see the lead bouncing about round its face. Uh, by the time I got to the rod, I managed to get rid of it, thank God. So the rod's just leaning on the bivvy at the moment while I let these geese move off. That's what's the beauty about putting on a little touch of baiting like that. Don't take them long to wipe it off and move away. So hopefully there's time for another. It's about three o'clock now. Uh, they're just moving off now, the geese. So I'll let them get around the corner because I'm sure they follow me boat. Um, like I said, there's a chance for another, I don't want to jinx myself. I'm not saying that I've got plenty of time and all that crap, but I've got a night to go. Bastard. Fucking bream's just drowned me. Dead. Bastard. Uh, the light's fading fast. Um, banks have dried out after that soaking off that bream. Bastard. Um, I've, just, I've just redone um, all three rods now. They're all on the same spots. Uh, well, the one where he had the bream on. That was just off the island, a couple of rod lengths off the island into, towards the open water. I've stuck that tight against the island there. You don't want another one of them. Um, I had a, we had a massive storm. You know, I don't know where that come from. It's, it weren't forecast on my phone. But um, the wind's been blowing. Well, not blowing. It's been coming from the south like a gentle breeze um, all weekend. And then this came from the north, blowing straight into my bivvy. It was like a good 40, 50 mile an hour wind. So I don't know where that came from. Might be in France. I to all the front of my bivvy down, thinking it was going to take off. And then it's gone now, and it's flat calm again. Clear skies. It's like a mill pond. Strange weather. Um, like I said, just before that, I had a take on my right hand rod. Uh, the one what's over there, what, what's near that sandbar, just off the, off the bushes, and drag it in the bushes, and I just, just lock it up and just keep walking back, keep walking back, or hoping it'll come away, but it can be pulled. So, probably jinxed myself there, saying, um, 
about losing two last week because I've now lost one so I'm one behind there one lost fish behind from last week and one bream we had two bream last week and I've had one um, so I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up there for tonight there unless something happens through the night otherwise I shall say there in the morning That's my second bream. I'm going the wrong way. So, it's half two in the morning. The right hand rod has gone the one where I lost that fish early on. That one's gone again. That's done with two fish now. Drain the water. Mm -hmm. Another one of the stockies. That's it. Nice fish, these where they get some weight on. Ready to bed for her. Get her back. Morning. Um, King Goose again on the spot. I had, that, uh, I had that bream last night, just after dark, which um, did me head a bit because it's off. I had it off that hot spot. I never had a bream off there before, but I had it come off that hot spot, so I just put it back out in the dark. So I weren't really confident with that. But this morning, I got up and uh, just, it was coming light. There was two geese on the spot, and then it. Um, the bobbin pulled up to the top so I thought it was the geese and uh, when I've come out the two geese are moving moving off the spot and there's like a big bow wave going away from me so whether I was done on that I don't know but uh, and it's back out now it's back out on the spot and the geese over and over again um, and then he had a kerp on my right hand spot so that the right hand spot has done three bites now and the other one's done three bites so I've landed five of them, but it's definitely a, since they had the, they had a fish kill, I don't know if you, well everybody knows about that, but they had a, a big fish kill on here um, about two years ago now, big oxygen crash, lost um, most of the big ones, we don't know what's left in here now, but we lost uh, quite a few of the big ones, so they have done a, a restock. There's probably more fish in there than what there was originally but it's a total different lake now to what it used to be it's uh, you get up in the morning before and you, you probably see 20 maybe 30 shows and uh, over the last two weeks i've probably seen three shows they just don't they just don't show themselves and obviously they're feeding and they're moving about now but they still don't show themselves um, I think there's still a, I think there's still a lot to learn on here because the, the main spots we used to have fish before they're, they're just not producing anymore. Um, well, the one on my left hand one that that was a, that was a hot spot, but not last year. Um, I used to always catch off that one, and then last year I never had a fish off it, and every time I was bringing me bringing me rig in, there was like leaves and all sorts of crap on it. So, uh, but this year it's clear again, so they've obviously started feeding on that spot again. 
in the corner the corner of the island there's like a big willow tree that what hangs over that was always a banker spot but um, over the last two weeks I've had a rod there and it's never it's never produced it's never produced a carp I've had a couple of bream off there but never done a carp so it's, it's definitely a um, Definitely a different lake. I think um, I think the old stock are following the, the new stock rain instead of the opposite way. So there's a lot to a lot to learn on here. I think uh, where I've been heading to all the spots where I normally head, I think it's time to start moving about and see where see where they are because I, th I think it's definitely a key to unlock on this lake yet. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'm going to wrap it up there now. If nothing happens, I've probably got an hour, hour and a half left now fishing before I start wrapping up. So if nothing happens in that time, I'll um, say there on the next one. <laughs>